very fortunate to be able to show you this and a very lucky and grateful guy this came to me from Tia after she saw how upset I was over our loss of Frank recently I don't know when you're gonna be watching this video but Frank DeSoma was the founder president CEO of Patriot Ordnance Factory USA been down there to visit saw how awesome these things are just could never get my hands on one until now get comfy this is going to be a long one this is the ultimate AR almost everything on it is unique to POF and made in house I've been there and seen it I'll show and explain what makes this thing so different coming up next on GB Guns looking at here is the Patriot Ordnance Factory Revolution and Revolution is a very fitting name for it because this is unlike well really anything else out there this is an AR-15 running 308 I'll show you how they did that also some of the other innovations we've got a lot to go over I'm going to separate the upper and lower which I have to do off screen because these receivers are so tight that they are not coming undone by simply pushing on the pins in fact I even have to apply some extra force just to get to pivot that's how tightly fit this thing is but uh, I'm gonna separate that and we'll start at the front no better yet let's start at these receivers let me explain what makes the receivers so different so to start off here is a standard AR-15 regular 556 sized lower you can see where an AR-10 308 mag would not work right the mag is about the same size as the entire well including from the pivot pin to about where the bolt catch is for that reason an AR-10 this one's the diamond back right where it fits has a longer receiver you can see if I set these two end to end here how much larger and longer the AR-10 receiver is I'll line them up vertically for you you can see it gives you about another inch also you can see trigger position if I line up by back end of the magazine well everything here lines up we've just got a little bit longer space here because there's a longer bolt POF Revolution is the gray one up top you can see I'm setting the magazine well ends in line and look at this see how much shorter that is than the AR-10 in fact I'm going to shuffle it for you line up by bolt catch and you can see doesn't quite match there either right it's sticking forward a little bit here but it's also sticking forward there if I line up by tail end here we can see that the pivot pins and the takedown pins are in the same spot as an AR-15 exact same size smaller than your regular AR-10 what they had to do to make room for that magazine well was move everything back so you see we've got our pins lined up here since the magazine well now ends where the bolt catch would be on a 15 everything's got to scoop back well that might make for a cramped hand position right the triggers move back so what about length of pull length of pull has actually remained about the same as well they've done that by scooting the pistol grip back and this end plate here which has a QD point helps keep that position and feeling and looking normal but everything's scooted back farther in fact on this side you can see how much closer the safety is to the takedown pin pretty ingenious design just to make that fit to get an AR-10 mag to fit on an AR-15 sized receiver there's also other features on here like ambi controls there's your release your bolt release mag release and safety bolt release mag release and safety to catch the bolt on the firing side there is a button here inside the trigger guard that you simply lift up on 
and that catches. That means you're not moving your firing hand off of the gun at all. Tuck that finger in, rack it, it locks in place. Left hand, new mag in, push that button to drop, and you're ready to go. So a completely different lower receiver, and that's not all that's different about this. Let's go over those bolt carriers. Up top we have a standard AR-15 bolt carrier, well used. <laughs> In fact, definitely needs some attention. This is from my first AR-15. Uh, everything looks normal and fine there. Down below, this is out of our Diamondback. You can see it's a much bigger carrier, much longer from breech to tail because it's got that longer receiver. That means it weighs more and that's also part of the recoil you feel. Also looking at the face of these bolts, you can see how much bigger a 308 bolt is. Here's the revolutions. It's basically an AR-15 size. We do have thinner walls here and when I visited POF I asked them about that. They say they use a different metal than everyone else and that's why they're not breaking. Lay them side by side. AR-15 Revolution AR-10. Look at these lined up. And you can see got all in shot there. But the Revolution is using the same size carrier as an AR-15. Some other things that are different on the carrier got the born on date and code. They use that to be able to look up what machine this was made on, by whom, on what date, and where the source materials were, came from. It's an aerospace industry habit that Frank brought over to POF and I'm grateful for it because these guns are awesome. You notice here our cam pin is actually a roller bearing. That's so that when it's unlocked and running along the inside of your upper receiver it's rolling instead of gouging, which is what your standard rectangular piece will do over time. Is it necessary? No. Does it preserve the life of the gun? Yes. You also notice that this tappet location, and this is the part that gets struck by the piston because it's a piston gun, more on that later, this is all built. This is one piece. No staking to worry about, no wobbling to worry about. That is one piece of metal. Beautifully done and a nice corrosion and uh, friction reducing coating on it. Amazing. Now, let's take a look at the upper. So here's our upper receiver, bolt back in. Charging handle, by the way, this is another POF piece that is full ambi. Is AR-15 sized, because remember, our bolt carrier is AR-15 sized. Now this looks a little meaty, and that's for good reason. You notice that dovetailed on the top here is the edge of the handguard, which helps guarantee that a front side here is planed with a rear side here. All one piece, all together. Looking inside there, you can see the fins. That is the barrel nut. It's a giant oversized aluminum finned barrel nut that helps cut down on heat. What looks like a gas tube is actually your operating rod to tap on the bolt for the piston system. And if we get the light in there, you'll see there's even some flutes on the barrel. There's another born on date mark on the barrel. And we've got one here on the handguard. Here's our piston system. Pretty easy push button and turn to adjust. Five positions on this thing. You've got a normal and adverse. You also have a suppressed and a light suppressed and a completely off position. So you can run it as soft as you want and tune it for the ammunition you need. And a three port muzzle brake on the end. Beautiful piece altogether. I love the step down on the rail here. It doesn't need to be that tall. The reason why the handguard is so tall is obviously because we have our piston system in there. But if you look at the side profile, this gives you a nice spot for hand to wrap up and around while keeping you free and clear. More QD points on the handguard, front and rear. We've got M-lock all the way around. We had a QD point on the rear of the lower receiver. 
uh, attaching a sling shouldn't be an issue. This whole thing, by the way, weighs about seven pounds, which is pretty much what an AR-15 weighs, except this is throwing 308. Another point of note, the uh, E squared emblem. If you've seen uh, my, one of my fancy gun build videos, I did an upper using POF parts, including their barrel in 5.56, had the same features. There's actually four flutes in the chamber. I can grab around. That's where I had a loose round laying around here. And this is just 223, but it'll work for illustrative purposes. And the flutes come to this part of the neck up here, up to the shoulder. And as the bullet leaves the barrel, gases are pushing it. They're also pushing back through here. They travel through those flutes to push rearward on the casing. Helps aid in extraction. And when I say the ultimate AR, when I went down to POF, we spent a day in the factory and we spent a day on the range. It was a media event with a handful of media personnel there. The, they had a revolution running pretty much nonstop all day out there on the range, full auto, shooting Wolf Steel Case. And of course the gun had to stop every once in a while to cool down to reasonable temperatures, although a piston gun runs cooler and that aluminum finned heat sink barrel nut certainly helps keep things cool. It was running all day on Steel Case 308, cheap Steel Case 308, and didn't have any issues because well, aside from all the other features, that extraction system in there that makes it uh, well, with a whole lot more reliable. You can see, uh, once again, our AR-15 size lower, standard AR-15 stock. Uh, this has an anti-tilt uh, buffer tube extension in there, which should help. One of the big fears with running a piston gun is that those forces are somehow going to cause leaning and tilting of the carrier. We'll see over time if that's an issue with this gun. I don't believe it to be. I'm excited to have this, especially a piston variant, because piston guns were Frank's passion to begin with. That's what Page Ordnance Factory sort of became known for, was making one of the first ready-to-run reliable piston ARs. It has a tight, tight receiver set. I'm going to have to tap on that guy to get in there a little more. Probably the Cerakote making it tight as well. But these things are, uh, well, of the pieces on here, what's different from a standard gun? The barrel's different. The operating system's different. The bolt and carrier are different. The receivers are different. The controls are different. Even the end plate is different to allow this rearward movement of the grip to make it handle and feel like an AR-15 and keep that same length of pull to the trigger, which is also a POF piece. So, not just a smattering of existing parts that they put together and put their name on or hire someone else to put their name on. These are made in-house, very unique. This is beyond an involvement of the AR uh, I think the name Revolution really fits. It is a revolution of what an AR can be. For decades, people said you can't run a 308 in an AR-15. And uh, they made it happen and added a lot of other very ingenious advancements. I got to give a shout out to my friends at Alabama Arsenal. It's only because of them that I had ever heard of Page Ordnance Factory. Uh, these are not inexpensive guns by any means. But that's because you're paying for the innovation and it all being made in one shop. Um, like I said, they're not sourcing out parts and slamming them together. Even the barrels they rifle, they're in-house. I've seen it. Uh, so it is a true POF gun. Um, completely unique in, in every way possible. But it is the absolute of what an AR can be. As far as I know here in 2020 and probably for the next decade or, so, or two unless somebody gets some serious catch-up game going on. When we get this out to the range we're gonna play with that adjustable system and figure out what loads will run how softly. We're we'll also test it's a 1 in 10 twist only a 16 inch barrel which people say is short for 308. Guys at Alabama Arsenal you can go watch their video uh, freehand standing ring and steel at 300 yards with it 
So, um, even though it's short for 308, it's obviously still doing its job. Uh, we'll see what we can get for accuracy using a variety of different loads. And, uh, man, I'm just super stoked to have this gun. This is an amazing piece. I hope those of you that are watching appreciate it for the ingenuity, the engineering, and the uniqueness of it. And uh, instead of the standard, oh, well, I've got a $400 AR-15 that does just as good. That might be true. Uh, it might be just as good for you and your needs. The fire behind this design was to make the ultimate fighting machine so that law enforcement and military could have 308 power available without hauling around a giant AR-10. And uh, they pulled it off. Amazing piece. Really looking forward to the range review, and we hope to see you guys there. Thanks for watching.